Hello, everyone. We are live uh, post Tell Your Ride, Tell Your Ride in Venice to talk about all the movies that premiered there. A lot of stuff um, to go over how that changes our predictions, all that fun stuff. And I'm joined by Anthony to do so. Yes, I feel like this is kind of the beginning of the season. I feel like September is a good time in a non strike world. Is. Um, this would be, you know, the exciting start to a, what is it, a seventh month journey, a six month journey? Uh, is, yeah, at least six months. Yeah. But at least as, as you mentioned, it, we, we can start by saying <laughs> link is in the bio during the strikes. Support the SAG and WGA. Fuck the AMTP, AMPTP. Um, pay your writers and actors properly and support them by donating down below. Um, but yeah. Are you ready to get into this? All the Telluride and Venice stuff? I am. Looking at the list of films that we're talking about, and especially, I, I don't know about you, it seems as if the like the, the buzz coming out of these festivals and the films seem so positive and so popular. Adding in, you know, never before seen events like Barbie, Oppenheimer, you know, we still have like a Scorsese epic on the way. This seems to be a very very good year like we're going to look back at this yeah. i think similar like 2017 of a year that just like it's amazing how many fantastic films we have in contention and so it'll be interesting which ones are able to like it out yeah i think we're going to have multiple films that get 10 plus nominations this year but quickly before we get into that um we've got some questions from josephine that we'll get into maybe once we um finish all of this uh say hello to joaquin hello Hey, Justin. Hey, Basil. Anthony uh, went off the grid for a little bit. No. I'm sorry. I went to make a movie. I made a short yeah. film. We finished production on Sunday, so I can now come back to Earth and talk about other people's movies. But it's uh, yes. crazy. It was, a, it yeah. was a lot of fun. Well, and I'll make sure to publish info about it when we get closer yeah. to it. Make sure everyone to go support it once, yeah. once the time has come. <laughs> uh, but Let's get into this with our first movie we're going to talk about. I think the big the big movie of the whole festival season so far, at least. We've got Poor Things, uh, incredible reviews, 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. I think it's still there last time I checked. Um, Rotten Tomatoes or I, the 100%? Run, yeah, yeah, and Metacritic, it's still in the 90s. Um, everyone seems to love it. Uh, it seems to have uh, more heart than expected, a little more sentimental. Um yeah, I mean, I just think this is a huge top three contender. I think, I mean, we've got all the potential here listed below. The stuff with the stars next to it, I don't think will probably happen. But outside of that, that's a ton of potential nominations right there. Yeah, I think, well, first off, I am not prepared for this season to have Christopher Nolan, Emma Stone, and Robert Downey Jr. in top form at the number yeah. one spot because that's i don't know what that's going to do to me i don't know if i'm going to be able to sustain that um but i do think that what we're seeing i think come out of the festival is this trajectory of the shape of water which i think could be um really same after. studio same studio i think this bizarre movie on paper but i think when people experience it and more importantly when they feel it it really does grab a hold of them i think it surprises them kind of in in a way i think Everything Everywhere All at Once did this as well, but I think it played more into a lot of popular uh, styles of storytelling and absurdity, where this seems to be, again, that sort of surprise and you can't believe this premise is working, but in the end, like people acknowledge what a what a masterpiece it is. Um, and yeah, I just think that, I mean, I feel like, is this Yorgos' first movie or first big film since The Favorite? Yeah, yeah, it is, yes. So, you know, it... They liked him the first time. I mean, the, the favorite was tied with Roma for the most nominations. It only won one for um, Best Actress, of course, for Olivia Coleman. But I also think yeah. that, like, I, I guarantee you it was neck and neck with Black Panther and a lot of those uh, technical categories, costume design, production design. So I do think that the favorite was beloved. And so it makes sense that the follow up, if it's on the same level, would perform similarly. Um, what do you think? Because I feel like this was not being talked about. And now it seems that it's the consensus that Emma Stone is on her way to her second Oscar. It seems like it. I mean, as Cesar said, um, <laughs> that's an interesting category because in all the other acting categories, there seems to be not a consensus, but like lots of people are predicting the same one or two people to win. Um, actress has been wide open in terms of who could win. Uh, 
I know I've previously thought net betting will. We can talk about that in a second. I don't know about that anymore. Um, I mean, some people say she might be too young. I think if the film is strong enough, people, the raves about this performance have been insane. They've said it's the best of her entire career. And she's already won an Oscar for what was previously one of her best performances. I I think it's very possible. I'm just, I'm unsure about the actress category right now. I think that's a category that we're going to see lots of ebbs and flows in throughout the season. Um, people could, I mean, she could end up becoming a sweeper or she could it become like that 2020, 2021 season where um, different actresses went at different ceremonies. Um, I think what but, we're yeah. not used to in Best Actress and what I'm very excited about this year is that typically, and this is one of the reasons why, for example, you know, Emma Stone wins for La La Land, or you look at the 2021 season, is that typically the performances in that category do not line up more than 50% with Best Picture nominees. And yeah. it looks like this year that we could have all five of the women nominated in this category be represented times. also with their films in Best Picture. And I think that would be rare. I think like you look at Emma Stone and La La Land winning, her biggest competition was Isabelle Huppert and Elle, who wasn't, you know, that was one of the few yeah. nominations for it. I think the only nomination for it outside of, at that point, foreign language film. Natalie Portman and Jackie, not a Best Picture nomination. Um, Florence Foster Jenkins, Meryl Streep, not a Best Picture nomination. Ruth Nega and Loving, mm -hmm. not a Best Picture nomination. La La Land yeah. was the only Best Picture nominated film and Best Actress. It made sense that then Emma Stone goes along for the ride. Um, and so I think that that's just something to keep in mind. But I also think that you're looking for narrative. And I do think if Emma Stone Oscar winner is surprising people to such a degree, it it just bodes so well for a narrative because that's what you want to leave with. You want to leave with saying, I've never seen anything like this. Have you seen Emma Stone in Poor Things? I think it could work out for her. I think she's, she's yeah. really cementing herself as a rare Hollywood, you know, just success story that's not burdened by a lot of the expectations. And, you know, she got Amazing Spider-Man out of the way early in her career. And now she's kind of, you know, she's gotten a good Disney live action remake. How many actors can say that? That's true. That's true. <laughs> Yeah, I think she can totally win. Um, we've got some comments about it. Uh, score. I'm not totally sure about score. I've seen some people talk about it. Um, they've mentioned that the score uses a lot of the similar notes that are used in the trailer. Um, I would. That's why I have it a little lower down. I don't have a star next to it. I do have it in my five right now. But you're right. That branch does um, like name composers. Um, and I don't believe it's a big name behind this. So I'm not completely sure about that. Um, and then adapted screenplay. Uh, we can uh, we can talk about that now. I think, I mean, adapted screenplay, we don't know where Barbie's going to end up still. It seems like they were originally adapted. Now they may. I think it should probably go adapted. I think it will probably end up in adapted, but it seems like they want to be an original. So I, I don't know, because if Barbie's also here and then you've got Poor Things and Killers of the Flower Moon and Oppenheimer, that's your top four, her best picture. So it's going to be hard. I mean, whichever one is winning Best Picture is probably what's going to end up winning that category, um, okay. potentially. Well, because I feel like we could see something with Nomadland where Nomadland was assured in picture and director. So then we yeah. went to father. And I could see if Oppenheimer just becomes this force um, in picture and director, then maybe they, they go for something else. I personally feel that like if Maestro is an original screenplay, then I think Barbie could count as an original yeah. screenplay. Yeah, that's so true. Based on ideas or people that have existed. And to be honest, mm -hmm. the narrative of Barbie is more original than the narrative of Maestro. Maestro is following the it true is. story of this, this couple. So I, I, and I also feel that the same way that everything everywhere all at once was praise and I think helped win original screenplay because people said how creative it was. I do think Barbie would fit into that. I think Barbie would be wise to go original because honestly, mm -hmm. Barbie versus past lives is a, is a bout that Barbie can win. Yeah. Um, where, you know, Oppenheimer kills flower moon, poor things, you know, it's really tough. I, I'm also intrigued going back to the favorite year is what was number two? Was it the favorite, which is what I think a lot of people thought would win it before Green Book ended up winning it. But, you know, you also had Roma in that category. I, I'd be interested to see if they look at Yorgos Lanthimos films as a director driven project or if they then go down across like down the board and like this is also yeah. a, a, well, he, a script achievement because he did not write this one. So he would, yeah. he himself would not be winning. I believe Tony McNamara, who also wrote The Favorite, would be the winner there. So but there's no awarding. These type of movies, his type of films, do they see it as a, yeah. 
you know, how Nolan is definitely looked at more as a director. Scorsese looked at yeah. as more of a director type of thing. I think he's a pretty 50-50 split because the way people talk about this screenplay, they've really praised the screenplay and the way that it's changed uh, the original, um, I forget what it's based on, but the original story. Um, yeah, let's see what else we have. People did think the favorite was going to win screenplay, but then they went for Green Book. Yeah, yeah, that's true. They totally, it really depends on where um, the uh, narrative ends up shaping up. We are in September, so it's really hard to tell right now. Um, yeah, Emma has been getting crazy amounts of praise. It is kind of Kate Blanchett tar level, maybe even more. The question um, for Emma is who is the Michelle Yeoh of this year? Because I, I do think that is the, yeah. be the only thing that stops Emma Stone. Listen, Emma Stone could, you know, because do you think I, I, it's a difference when you when you're getting to your third, it's different than when you're getting to your second. Because Kate Blanchett of it course, is. got to her second. Um, Denzel Washington got to their second. You know, in both of them are waiting to get their third. But I, I'm looking at the list. I can I can pull up who I have in contention. I do think that what we're looking at is a lot of people that aren't in the club mm -hmm. that are vying to get into the club. Um, I'm really interested to see Maestro and see how much of the movie is really about Carrie Mulligan. Um, yeah. Because she could pose something, especially because there's a lit... I don't think they have it the same way, you know, a sort sort of an IOU type of thing, but you know, promising young woman was a was a big deal, and it did win. It was, yeah. Oscar. So there could be this sort of like Leo not winning for Wolf of Wall Street and then winning for The Revenant. This sort of like we're going to give it to you s close after your previous nomination that a lot of people really admired. Um, but I don't know. I think we have to see Color Purple. You know, just like another American Idol yeah. alum with Jennifer Hudson, she could re and listen. It's the Color Purple it's like baby performance. Yeah. That the revival with Cynthia Revo, <coughs> she was the only performer not in Hamilton to win an acting Tony that year. Yeah, so this is a performance that could support her, but also is the nomination the win for her. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. But I think Emma Stone should feel very happy coming out of the festivals. As I, a I think it, as well. Yeah, as a producer. So if it wins Best Picture, as with Margot Robbie, um, they will also win. Um, I also find it interesting where the critics awards will go in terms of best actress. I think they've really got a battle between Emma Stone and Sandra Huller. Um, I think I, they might be evenly split, to be honest. I think maybe Sandra Huller would take one or two more, but I think those are your two front runners in terms of actress winning on the critic side versus the industry. Um, and then we've also got, who knows, Annette Benning. We'll talk about our updated predictions at the end, but who, she could still show up. Yeah, who knows? Um, because that does, I don't think that's getting into best picture, but we'll see. We shall see. Uh, Oppenheimer, Barbie, poor things. Yeah, I think that is an easy top four. I agree. Um, yeah, I think it has, like you mentioned, it, I think it has a much easier chance at winning in original. Past lives and holdovers, I think, are really the only two big contenders there in terms of potential winners. Um, and I think Barbie is a higher tier contender than either of those. Um, this is an interesting question. Do I think past lives is dead in picture? I think past lives is, uh, lots of people have been saying it lately, going to get women, oh, right, there it is, going to get women talking, um, where it's going to just get picture and screenplay. I don't think, I, think I that love the per <laughs> Yeah, it's going to become one. Um, I think the acting performances, while I love them, are far too subtle and from actors who are not like like big and established that I don't think, because the acting categories in pretty much every category this year are very stacked. I don't think any of them are going to get in. But I do think original screenplay is very barren. So I think it'll definitely still get in there and could potentially win there, like Women Talking. And then I do think it'll be just strong enough to sneak in in one of those last few spots. I think the critics will really go for it like they did with Women Talking um, to the point where it is able to sneak in right at the end. But I could also see a world where it does miss totally. So we'll have to see. Um, and yeah, Poor Things is... Uh, yeah, I mean, if you look at the trailer, I don't watch a lot of trailers, but I did watch this trailer just because... The visuals, everything. I mean, I even have it listed here. Some people think it could get nominated for visual effects. Uh, there's flying cars and stuff in it. So I wouldn't count it out. Uh, as we um, talked about previously in visual effects, they usually go for whichever film is closer to closest to best picture in terms of a winner. So who knows? Maybe it could even win. I doubt it. But um, yeah, any final thoughts on poor things before we move on to our next film? I'm just very happy. I'm very happy this movie's I'm so excited. 
I am so excited for this film. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. December is too far away. I wish they stuck to September, but you know, it's the better Oscar date. Uh, Holdovers, another big debut at Telluride. Um, got very positive reviews. I believe it's still at 100 on um, Rotten Tomatoes. I didn't put the Metacritic on here, but I believe the Metacritic is in this like high 70s, low 80s. Um, I think this is going to be a big contender. It's focus features only play this year, and I think they almost always, not almost always, but they're a pretty consistent um, distributor and campaigner in terms of award season. Um, I think it's going to be one of the more crowd-pleasing films. We usually have one or two of those every year where it's more dad movies, more crowd-pleasing, a little more generic. I think this will be one of them. I think picture. I Alexander Payne doesn't when his movie is an Oscar contender. He usually doesn't miss in director. So right now I have him just getting in. I don't think those allegations seem to be playing much of a part this season. It seems like it's kind of being looked over. We'll have to see how the season develops if more people bring it up. But it doesn't seem to be a big factor right now. Um, Jimadi, personally, yeah. like. I'm trying to, and this was the Me Too year. I feel like the only time that has actually hurt somebody was like James Franco. Like, I feel like, Kevin, yeah, like Casey Affleck won. You know, a lot mm -hmm. of times these allegations don't hurt the people in contention. You know, and yeah. if the movie is good, they're going to get like, if it's, you know, if the consensus is good, you know, David O. Russell not getting in for Amsterdam is because it's Amsterdam because was it not was a good that. movie. It's yeah. not because of him, you know. So I, I wonder if that actually has an effect on anything. And how aware people even are. Well, yeah, <laughs> who knows? Um, best, I think I think it's a big acting contender. I don't think either of these people, I mean, maybe Randolph, but uh, Paul Giamatti and Divine Joy Randolph in actor and supporting actress seem pretty pretty locked into me at this point. Um, Divine Joy Randolph, it just steals the show and everything she's in, whether it's Stole Might Is My Name, um, Only Murders in the Building. She was just on the Idol, terrible show, but she was great in it. Um, so I think I'm very, I'm very look, much looking forward to her getting nominated. Um, lots of people also mentioning Dominic Sessa, who is the younger, the main, I th kind of the protagonist, uh, co-protagonist with uh, Giamatti, the main young kid as a standout performance here. I think supporting actor is too crowded for him to get in. We'll talk once again about our predictions at the end, but I think it has potential for him to be a Lucas Hedges-esque um, Manchester by the Sea nomination to go with the film. And then original screenplay and editing. It could maybe miss editing. It's like my five there right now, but I do think editing is usually the top five or so contenders. And I do think this is probably after those clear top four we mentioned before, the number five. Um, and it could win screenplay because it seems like it's much stronger than past lives is. So, yeah. <laughs> I think Manchester by you... is a great comp for this movie. Yeah. Um, and which would then support the director argument because Kenneth Lonergan, I believe, did get in. Um, yes. Giselle Jenkins. Villeneuve, Gibson, and um, Lonergan. So we mm -hmm. have to see. I think this is a film that will definitely help if it, it plays really well, if the box office is strong, if it becomes a little indie hit. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, I think I definitely think two performances are probably likely because that's what this movie needs to get into picture because it's not going to get a lot yeah. of below the it's line. No, it's not a tech player at all. Yeah. So it's going to need, I think, you know, Giamatti, Randolph, and then Maybe a Lucas. I think that Lucas Hedges argument is, is very strong for a movie like this. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to see. Supporting actor is full of a lot of big names in big movies. So we'll talk about that when we get to it. But it's, it's going to be a, all these acting categories are very crowded and tough. So, <laughs> Nyad, let's talk about it. Um, okay. So I thought this was going to be a big contender. I don't, that was also before I knew about everything going on with Diane Nyad in real life and all of her controversies. So I'm much less of a supporter now at this point. Um, but I kind of thought the reviews kind of went how I would have expected them to go. Uh, like the middle of the road, crowd pleasing, like it's not an incredibly well made film, but um, it gives you the feels, the emotions. Um, it's a sports crowd pleasing movie. Um, and Ben, it seems like most people think the main. Oscar potential from it is Benning or Foster, which I would agree with. Um, I think those are the only two real potential. I don't really think picture, cinematography, editing, sound. I don't think any of that is going to happen, which is stuff I had in for before. Um, I I just don't. I think in a less competitive think, year, it would have yeah. potentially had the chance to. 
But I think this year is just way too competitive and Netflix has much better options to campaign for that I don't see it happening. I think with a different studio, I don't think a rousing sports movie plays well at home. You need to go to a theater to see yeah. that. Do you think King Richard does what it does if it's on HBO Max only? You know, well, That is where lots of people watch. You could it. argue in 2021 it basically was. But yeah. I just think that there are certain experiences that are tied in with the movies that you're not going to get the same thing at home. And I think you know, free solo part of, which is what these filmmakers did before this, part of what made that movie so exhilarating is seeing it on a massive screen. Some people saw it in IMAX and I think they did a big IMAX push right before the Oscars. And I think that contributed to why it won also because two of the better documentaries were out of the category. Yeah. Um, but so I, I don't know. I just think you add in the controversy, which means that, you know, Twitter is not going to be this movie's friend, which is a small section. It's not a huge section. It's not going to be something that makes or break the movie. But I do think no. that any word of mouth can help or hurt a movie. Hurt. So yeah. that will not help it. Um, and yeah, Netflix has a lot of other priorities and other movies that will need support. The, I don't think Netflix has an Irishman or even a marriage story where they feel that they can just rest on the laurels of like, oh, of course we're going to get it. Like they're going to have to campaign mm -hmm. uh, films like May, December and I don't know if not, I mean, we'll see if Nyad really is this sort of like this, un, like if it turns out to be a coda, for example, just like, have you seen this movie? And then everybody just starts like getting behind it. But yeah, I also think that Annette Bening, as much as we love her in our indie circles, she's not the biggest name to pull people in, especially nowadays, no. you know, we're what are we like more than 20 years removed from American beauty. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think this movie might have to, It'll be one of those also rands that I don't think maybe I don't think it'll make it in any category to the Oscar stage. I think Best Actress is swamped with yeah. as we said Best Picture contenders and Supporting Actress. I mean, we're dealing with Color Purple has multiple contenders, and we we just this a really well, strong year for female films, and yeah. I don't think that one that isn't already through the door is going to manage to eke their way through i mean jodie foster won the golden globe for the mauritanian and that didn't translate anywhere else so how does yeah. that happen without any wins because i don't think jodie foster is winning anything at any previous award show when you have people like lily no. gladstone emily blunt and the like winning awards yeah yeah i think it also really depends on how much netflix is going to choose to push it post-festival it's going to play at tiff later on in tiff i think later this week maybe next week um i think as arthur mentions here Lots of people are saying that the ending is very crowd pleasing. Lots of like, um, I forget who, I think Ann Thompson tweeted about um, a, Nyad's um, screening that she was at somewhere and that the ending, like everyone loved it and everyone went on a big high. So I do think this is going to appeal to older Oscar voters, your AARP Oscar voters who like those um, sports crowd pleasing movies, um, who like Annette Benning and Jodie Foster. So I do think they both still have potential to get in because as I mentioned in that tweet, as you mentioned earlier, um, also in the supporting categories, there's usually at least one performance in supporting and in the lead categories that isn't in Best Picture. It's pretty rare for all five to all be in films that are also in Best Picture. So I, I could see that either being Benning or Foster in lead actress or supporting actress. I'm not completely confident about that, but I think it's possible. Um, but yeah, I think Netflix's big push is Maestro. And I think if there were to be a second push, it would be probably May, December. And then I think Nyad and Rustin are both contending for those like crowd pleasing movie kind of spots. Um, and I could see this. I think the Globes will probably like it more than the Academy, if I were to guess. That I, well, what's even happening with the Globes, too? <laughs> They're just, a whole mess this year. Yeah. Yes, I, have, I could see that happening um, because, you know, Jodie Foster won for the Mauritanian, and that Benning, I think, got in in 2019 for the report. You know, yeah. this that makes more sense than the Oscars going all the way with Nyad. Um, I also think that, you know, you look at, a, I feel like what we're going to see this year, I know I mentioned the 2017 year, but that was just based on like the wealth of wonderful films we have. I think yeah. what we're going to see is a year similar to 2019, where, as you said, a lot of nom a lot of contenders, a lot of films maybe having more than 10 plus nominations. I think you said that mm -hmm. four could, could, be that this year with yeah Oppenheimer, easily Martin, easily uh yeah. four things and killers of the flower moon yeah. in a year like that it doesn't really leave a lot of room for these 
smaller movies to get in over the other. You know, there were so many supporting actor contenders that could have gotten in, but two Irishmen's could get in there and that's what happened, mm -hmm. you know. And unless you're Tom Hanks, you know. You exactly. You have to be a name. Jodie Foster. Jodie Foster. Jody Foster is a Tom Hanks and somebody who hasn't been nominated in a while is a two-time winner and maybe mm -hmm. come back. But I also think that we can't, I, I, I feel that you can't compare a lot of times male trajectories with female trajectories. Unfortunately, there's a difference in how people view them. And I think if you're using Tom Hanks to compare Jodie Foster's chances, it's not going to, it's not Even gonna, in that same year, though, movie. someone sneaking into supporting actress based on name and um, their movie wasn't a huge contender. Kathy Bates still got in for Richard Jewell, even though that wasn't a huge overall contender. She still got in because I think she was a name and people I think that says more about Jennifer Lopez than it does about Kathy Bates is, is my read of that. Because that just felt so odd that at the last minute, because Jennifer Lopez was out front for so long. I think that also had something to do with it. Hustlers came out in September and the subject of the material, the movie, you know, the thing, I don't know. It, it's an interesting situation. I just, uh, I don't know. I, it's, I feel that supporting actress in particular is very strong this year. The female categories are just stacked. And usually when we have the Kathy Bates sneaked in, it's like, it's when we're maybe like, oh, who could be that fourth or fifth nomination? We, we're not, we're wondering who's the eighth. We're, we're looking at a year like 2019 with Best Actress when like, Lupita Nyong'o was like eighth for us and people were trying to figure out, can she get in with the Sagnom? You know, that's, I think what we're yeah. looking for this year. Very competitive year. I agree. Uh, next up, Maestro. I think Netflix is true number one contender this season. Um, I know there are lots of talk pre festivals about how it's screened, bad screenings. It seems like the reception was pretty positive overall. I wouldn't say it was raving. It seems like people had complaints about the scripts, the script and um, the screenplay and how it was structured, but um, pretty undeniably, uh, Carrie Mulligan and Bradley Cooper were mentioned as giving great performances. So I think that's probably going to happen. People also mentioned he has clearly leveled up directing wise. I don't think, I think director is too crowded this year and i think they still don't like actor directors so i i doubt anymore. that they used to love them <laughs> yeah not anymore not anymore that director's branch is very picky in who they choose to nominate so i don't well, think it will be the greatest fear it's the actors directing themselves mm -hmm. <laughs> yep they're taking they're taking our jobs uh yeah and then i mean the makeup it's probably the contender for uh, the, the front runner for that category because i mean it's a makeup transformation biopic performance of course uh and then I mean, who? I think it's Lee, Makeup Matthew Lee uh Poor Things? I think so. I think it's more transformative. And Poor Things, I think it's really just Willem Dafoe, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. we have to see both movies, but um, just That's to bring true. up, um, you know, we, we could get a... Didn't Mad Max win makeup and hairstyling? You know, we, we could always get one of those. I think so. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Um, but I... I think it's interesting. I don't think Netflix was expecting to have to run as big a campaign. I don't know why. I Listen, I personally, like, listen, I know back in whenever we did a video, like early, 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 I think it was like April, May or something. And I yeah. said, listen, I don't know what's happening. All I know is at this point, I'm going to trust Christopher Nolan. It's a, it's an important story. That's it. I don't know why people are so surprised about, maybe it's just because they've seen the movie, but like, it seems as if Netflix wasn't anticipating Oppenheimer kind of being in direct competition in so many of these categories with my yeah. show. And now they have to work to get in the category, let alone win them. Yeah, yeah. Oppenheimer, I, I would still, we'll talk about it later. I'd still have Killian Murphy winning for Oppenheimer. I think that's, he's the tour de force of that oh. film. He's the, he's everything in that film. He's in every scene. Um, I think that'll be a much more widely seen film as well. I think more people, like in terms of SAG, which usually goes for more baby performances, like, um, even Brendan Fraser in The Whale last year, who did beat Austin Butler, which made more money. But I think SAG is going to like Oppenheimer because Oppenheimer is just a huge phenomenon. Um, but yeah, I mean, the other nominations, I think it'll get into original screenplay because that category I don't think is super competitive. And if it gets, if it's in picture, it'll probably get screenplay. It could be like Mank and end up missing still somehow. Uh, I think Mank was suspected to get into both screenplay and um, what was the other one it missed? Did it? I missed something else that year. I think like cinematography or something. Oh, no, editing. I missed editing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's what that's what could happen here. It could miss editing. Um, I don't think it'll get sound or costume design um, or editing, really. I don't think it'll be strong. I don't think it'll be a top five contender. But I think all those other ones are pretty likely at this point. 
I think it'll perform probably similarly to what Marriage Story did for Netflix. Um, and then maybe, you know, we'll see with, you know, acting, maybe Carrie Mulligan can, you know, amount, surmount something. Um, and that can be the win for Maestro. I'm I'm interested. I, I, I was in, very intrigued by the trailer. Um, of course, it's Leonard Bernstein is such an important figure in music and culture of the 20th century. Coming off of Tar, of course, as well. It's so. a hard one to follow, though. Seems like it yeah. doesn't quite, quite live up to it. I mean, we'll, we'll um, see. I listen. I love A Star Is Born, um, so I have faith in Bradley Cooper. Um, and listen, I will not. I I do think it's a race. I think Killian Murphy is helped in that. I think every, he. I think he is the biopic version of Joaquin Phoenix and Joker, as far as like Kathy Bates <laughs> talking about how much she was like. I've seen it twice. I was blown away by Walking Phoenix. That sort of mm -hmm. performance, a little similar to Daniel Day Lewis and Lincoln, you know. But I worry because it's his first nomination. Can he get the? Win? I think. I think some people, even though I'm most people know him, I think most people probably haven't seen this level of performance from him. So I think it could also be one of those like revelation type things, like oh my god, I didn't like ever think he could do this, or um, I've never seen him in this light. So I think I'm still sticking with Killian, but. We'll have to see. I do. I do think it is interesting um, how Mulligan seems to be. I agree. Marketed as comment. as the lead of this film, which, based on the reviews, it seems like she takes over in the second half of the film. The first half is a little more um, Leonard Bernstein focused. But no, it's uh, the reverse of House of Gucci. Yeah, the reverse of House of Gucci. Exactly. God, um, House of Gucci. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, he, he centered his fir first film around a female protagonist. I think this will probably. Well, be more of a co-lead thing. I fair, mean, that was more of a co-lead. He too. gave the Jackson main character. I think he gave that character more to do in the A Star Is Born story. That's true. The previous That's true. versions, it was definitely Judy Garland was uh, objectively the main character of that movie. If you go yeah. back to the '50s version and Streisand, of course. So he he leveled it out for A Star Is Born. I think wisely. It's a great film. Um, but yeah, I think I he. I really admire Bradley Cooper. I think that he he knows that, like, listen, I am such a force behind this movie. Like, it doesn't have to be all about me. And he could mm -hmm. get a lot of respect for that, especially if Carrie Mulligan delivers, which, of course, is Carrie Mulligan. She's um, going to. Yeah. I just worry because... And I don't worry because, listen, Bradley Cooper deserves an Oscar. He's been nominated, what, nine times already before this? Yeah. Producing, he's gonna get to 10 and 11 for this right, at least not nominating for director but he's you know writing act like he's such a great representative of like just what a hollywood filmmaker looks like um he has scorsese and spielberg behind this movie that's producing. crazy yeah. so like it could happen for him and, and it could just be the sort of thing of like it bringing it up again you know mcconaughey winning for dallas buyers club and DiCaprio waiting, even though may, many, probably many would probably say Wolf of Wall Street is the better performance. You know, we'll, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. I think what hurts Killian just a little bit is that I feel acting wise, Oppenheimer is already covered. Um, and we'll see. That's if, true. We'll see if That's they're true. wanting to go 50% of the acting categories to one movie. Of course, they did 75% for everything everywhere all at once. It helps yeah. when you're the best picture. That's pretty runner. rare, though. Pretty rare. But uh, yes, and especially again with somebody, you know, Michelle Yeoh and Kiwi Kwan. Part of the narrative is that they had never gotten this opportunity before. There was an urgency to give them this nomination, and then Jamie Lee Curtis. We've talked about the sort of she is seen as helping that movie get made. Hollywood royalty with Killian Murphy. How big is Peaky Blinders? How big, you know, was that show that makes people know who he is? You know, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. I do think, I forget where I saw this, the past two decades there has been one time where a lead actor and supporting actor both won for the same film. I mean, last decade it was McConaughey and Leto. I think the previous one was Mystic River, I believe. So I could see that happening for Oppenheimer, um, potentially. But we'll have to see. Those those categories are they're still shaping up. Um, poor Things is... I could, I mean, it seemed like before, pre-Poor Things, uh, Lots of the texts were either Oppenheimer or Barbie. I think in terms of wins, I could see Poor Things taking one of those two Barbie Oscars, either production yeah. design or costume design. Or um, Barbie is your Black Panther, and just like the favorite, yeah, you could see the same thing. You know, we'll see. But I think 
Barbie should feel more worried. That, uh, the ones that Oppenheimer was jockeying for, I think, are safer. Um, yeah, like sound, editing, cinematography. Those are, those yeah, are those... safer than production design and costume design. Mm -hmm. Which, which seem to be poor things' strengths. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I could see it getting some snubs, too. I'm not sure um, what exactly I would see it missing out of the stuff I have it getting in right now. It could miss cinematography. Yeah at the end of the day, but they do love black and white and Libatique. Um Could miss screenplay. I don't think it'll get editing sound or costume design, but we'll have it to see. It helps that it's an original, I think. Um, yeah. It could be Ma Rainey. That's true. Uh, which didn't get into picture. Got actor, actress, makeup. I could see that too. I, I just looking at best picture, like, I feel like there's a very strong like, there's a, there's a very strong group of like, I would be surprised if this didn't get in. I think that given also that we have a lot of like narratives, like there aren't a lot of biopics I feel other than Oppenheimer. Like I feel like we need a couple of those in here. Uh, yeah. A couple of true stories. So yeah, they do love those. <laughs> they do. Um, that's true. The Golden Globes do go for actors turn directors more so than um, the Oscars. I could totally see that. Like they went, they went for Regina King, I believe that year. Um she could. I I think she I think it is kind of like a Star is Born. I do think it is probably pretty even in terms of who's leading the film. I think it's gonna be split. Um but I mean just the fact that they made her, I mean this the whole entire poster, I think does say a lot. Um I don't know when he will win an Oscar. Hopefully soon, you know. Underrated actor, also has a great YouTube channel. Um yeah. I, and I do think they're positioning her as the lead. I agree. Um, yeah. So we can. Are you ready to move on to the next film? Okay. Saltburn. This is an interesting one in terms of Oscar potential because I don't really think there is any. Um, I'm super excited for it. It seems like my kind of movie. It'll get, um, it's giving Babylon vibes, as everyone's been saying. I was about to say, is this Ambrose um, Fidel's Babylon? It's See? Babylon. It's, um, what's that movie? Um, What's the, the one with Jude Law? I forget what it's called. Oh, Talented Mr. Ripley. Yes. Oh. Seems like that. Um, two incredible actors in it, and Barry Keegan and um, Jacob Elordi, who are both coming up. Which, Rosamund listen, I, I'm very happy for the guy, and I think he's he's showing that he's an incredible actor, but I just, like, I feel like the only thing he's done so far is Euphoria, and this year, like, it's And crazy. he was so good in it, though. But Man, yeah, he's listen, having a crazy All those year. actors, I'm so happy. Hunter Schaefer in Hunger Games, I'm happy mm -hmm. we're... We're, we're, we're pulling them out. The fact that yeah. they have to go back Free from season people. three is ridiculous. Hopefully, yeah. I don't even know what to say about that. Yeah. Crazy stuff. Euphoria, we'll have to see what happens with that. that but that's um, yeah, that's one thing you should have when you go onto a set for sure. Um, and yeah, but I mean, lots of people saying Barry Keegan is giving an incredible performance in here, the best of his career. Um, that's like, truly brave i think is the word i saw used a lot um it started off rotten on rotten tomatoes but it's risen a lot um but it's as you can see by the imdb rating um it's still divisive i think the metacritic is like low 70s or high 60s it so. doesn't break a movie it just means that it's not gonna no. be a no i just don't see what it like i actors too competitive for keegan to get in supporting actress is too competitive for pike who seems to have a smaller role than expected i think there are four people who are close as close as locked as you can be in september that are close a lot mm -hmm. Killian murphy bradley cooper paul giamatti and leonardo dicaprio that fifth spot could be claimed by a barry Keoghan. it could be but coleman domingo in that performance in a Did biopic movie rotten tomato score on that one it's not great but you know i don't know i worry I, the thing i worry with with rustin is the same thing i worried about respect um is, which is that you know if I feel like it's for some reason people like to pass over the people of color biopics far quicker than they would the the biopics about white heroes and white people of history. Yeah, and if they just especially because that is that Netflix. That's Netflix. That doesn't really help it either. So we'll see. Yeah. I'm worried, especially because if Coleman Domingo then splits the vote because he has also the color purple, that might mm -hmm. be the one that gets him the nomination. If anything. I don't know. I'm just saying I would not count out something like Saltburn <laughs> if it is divisive, but it gets people talking. 
It's going to play in theaters. Emerald Fennell is an Oscar winner. It could be exciting. It could be this sort of thing of, have you seen Saltburn yet? Something like a Jojo Rabbit type of thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm very excited for it. This and Poor Things are easily my two most anticipated for the rest of the year. Some of the stuff I've read about Saltburn, it just seems insane and amazing, and I just can't wait for it. Um, it does seem more well-liked than Babylon. I, I don't think it probably has quite as insane stuff as Babylon, like with the elephant and stuff. We would have um, heard about it if there was. Yeah, there is some stuff I've heard about that is interesting, but I don't think it's maybe quite on that level. But, but also, I mean, they're not afraid. I think Paramount was afraid of Babylon which is why they held that thing as long yeah. as they could have. Um, mm -hmm. they, it's people have they didn't seen give it a chance. So, yeah. you know, we'll see. It will be I, interesting with Amazon because Amazon's got this and air, which one they choose to be their big horse. Oh, salt burn. I, I'm sorry. You and I, if you enjoyed air, I, I apologize. Uh, that is not an Oscar movie. Matt Damon was not. your only chance. And he's in a, he's has a chance to get nominated for a different movie. So like, yeah, it's not at Amazon pick salt bird. It's going to be the one that they we'll talk about. It has a better pedigree it, and it just looks more like a Oscar contender. Air could have easily been an Emmys contender. Yeah, that's, Sorry, it, it does feel like a TV movie. I agree. I'm not a huge fan of air. Viola Davis um, is the only thing that movie could get. And I still yeah. don't think that's the type of thing that goes. That's to the too, Oscars. that's too crowded. That would be, if it happens, it'd be SAG and SAG only because they love her. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as cinematography does look incredible, but Linus Sankra didn't get in for Babylon either. So right now I'm going to think this gets goose egged. I don't even have it in original screenplay anymore, to be honest. Let's see how um, it plays. Because yeah. Listen, we would be saying a diff completely different story about Barbie and Oppenheimer if they were an Oscar box office hits. Yeah, box office yeah. Again, box office doesn't destroy you, but if you get good box office, it can save you. And I think, you know, where would we be if Fablemans was a big indie hit? Where would we be yeah. if a lot of these movies were, you know, everything everywhere? Where would that movie have been if it didn't make a lot of money at the box office? So if Saltburn can go out and play well, and with that cast, with the subject material playing into that demographic, if the audience for Bottoms can come out for Saltburn, who knows? Maybe this could surprise and get in at the number 10 spot for Best Picture. Yes, I think it's very much attracting the LGBT community for sure. <laughs> In terms of the material and all this stuff um that poster alone but yeah i do think they are going to be pushing air still to be honest i think they'll push it i just don't think they're gonna waste their time and they're gonna waste their money and they're gonna do the netflix it's... strategy of not picking their contender and diluting everything i think air is still more oscar friendly though to be honest i if i were to guess which one is has a better chance air just seems like the crowd pleasey film with a bunch of stars in it that i mean it could get into screen i probably has a better shot in screenplay than this does to be honest um, i gotta see Saltburn. i just know that when i saw air it just i don't know it didn't really work for me i didn't like it um and i think it to me it just i didn't feel like there was anything really that special about it that was worth putting in again maybe besides viola davis especially her phone call conversation with matt damon at the end um and so that's that's where i'm like if I'm Amazon and I have a, a, a divisive, more exciting movie that the tomato meter did even out to an 82, you know, mm -hmm. Metacritic, I think is 59, um, which is. Oh, great. wow. Yeah. But, um, you know, know, let's see happened. more critics get into this. I do think Jojo Rabbit could be a very apt thing of this sort of like controversial type of movie. I have to see like Jojo Rabbit had the heart that I don't know if Saltburn has, but I don't know. I don't listen. think it does. I don't think Promising Young Woman at this stage, people weren't even, didn't even know Promising Young Woman existed at this stage in 2020. And well, I think they did. It premiered at Sundance, but it was delayed. Yeah, but I don't think people saw it as no conversations. Remember, that was an yeah. April release that only became an Oscar release because of the pandemic. So yeah. I think that I would not doubt Emerald Fennell being able to twist another Oscar darling out of something that we weren't necessarily thinking could. Potentially, potentially. Um, this is interesting because Barry did win the BAFTA, so I do think they do really like him there. Yeah. And I think they have one extra spot, so I do think he could probably get in at BAFTAs. Golden Globes, maybe. Critics' Choice, maybe. <laughs> uh, Critics' Choice also throws as many spots as they want out there in all their categories, so probably, honestly. Um, but I do think he will still end up missing actor. Who's your five in actor? Because I think we agree on the It's top. the same basic five that everyone has, I think. With Murphy... So 
Cooper. Yeah, Murphy, Cooper, DiCaprio, Giamatti, and Domingo. I'm so you have no, I don't if I'm don't debating know. someone else, it's it's in a film we're gonna talk about in a second. Is it next up? Oh it is. Let's let's transition to it. All the strangers. If there's another actor I'm considering in Best Actor instead of Coleman Domingo, I would honestly consider um Andrew Scott for all of the yeah. strangers. When people talk about the performances in this film, he is the standout. I know there's lot there's lots of people saying Mescal. Yeah, he's not and on Foy. Your little slideshow. He's right there on the bottom. Oh, there he is. Sorry. He's got the little star next to him. I can yeah. read. <laughs> <laughs> he's the, he's right there. Um yeah, and Jamie Bell as well. But he seems to be um the big emotional acting standout of the film. Um I just don't think I think if there were one less of those top five in there, he would get in. But um, I think this is definitely an adapted screenplay for sure. It seems like a very screenplay driven film. Um, I think this is going to in, going to do incredibly well at critics places. I mean, look at that Metacritic score, look at that Rotten Tomatoes score. I think this will eat up all the critics awards. I think Andrew Scott will get plenty of critics awards nominations. I just don't know if this is the kind of film that ends up in best picture and in a bunch of categories outside of screenplay, to be honest. What do you think? Yeah, romantic fantasy is, I think, a tough sell to the Academy. Um, Especially so, not straight. Not straight. Um, and we already have Barbie. Uh, we already have the color purple. Um, so we already have, you know, queer representation. You know, something tells me poor things will have something. I don't know why. <laughs> oh, I'm uh, sure. Maestro. My, yeah. So we have a lot of, uh, of queer representation. And that's not saying that all of the strangers couldn't get in. Um, but it def it won't have that sort of patina of support that that you know it's not going to be like if you want to support that type of story and these type of characters you know support this movie um, yeah we'll see uh, I think again we have to see how this plays I I think that this is not go this is going to be something that is like this sort of campaign is willed upon is like work is put into this type of campaign it's this a searchlight who yeah. does very well but They're has the best campaigner. Searchlight yeah, knows they, what to do because when it comes down to it, it is very clear what Searchlight is getting behind. And we already know what oh, they're yeah. getting behind. They're getting behind poor things. Um, They've gotten multiple so, in before, though. I'm interested, though, like what those were. I'm going to try and do it. I believe it was Shape of Water and Three Billboards both got in that year. Hey, that was the same year? Yes, it was. Jesus. Yeah. 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 So I think it's a very close outside contender right now. I'd have it at like 11 or 12. So if one of these fall off, if Color Purple comes out and isn't good at all, then I would probably bump it in there. But right now, I just see adapted screenplay. Maybe if Domingo and that movie falls off, Andrew Scott could get in, which I would love to see. Maybe, um, as I mentioned before, one of the performances in support the supporting categories is usually from a film not in Best Picture. So maybe Paul Mescal could get in there and his After Sun Afterglow. Um, Claire Foy, it seems like she's great in it. I just think supporting actress is too crowded for her to get in. She has and a people gym. also say <laughs> she does, point. she'll get in eventually at some point. Will she? Hopefully. I've been, I've been I saying that's so. in first man. I hope so. I really do. Oh, god, yeah, I forgot about first man. Yeah, wow. Um, I think they're definitely prioritizing poor things over all yeah. of the strangers. I do think out of any studio campaigning for awards, I would believe in Searchlight the most to get two into best picture. Which, and the um, other time they've done that recently is Birdman and Grand Budapest Hotel, which were, I think, yeah. the, the front runners in nominations and wins. But I would argue mm -hmm. they didn't expect Grand Budapest. I think the same way they didn't necessarily, because like, you look at like Martin McDonough's trajectory before Three Billboards, that wasn't the type of thing that was like, oh yeah, of, of course, Oscar front runner. You know, if anything, Francis McDormand was the best part, like motivating factor and even then, like when was the like when was the last time she had a movie play at that level? Shape of Water, the thing, same thing. You know, Guillermo del Toro was coming off of what, what Crimson Peak and Pacific Rim. So I think yeah. also like when they get two in there and they're two major forces, I don't think they. It's not like Irishman Marriage Story where Netflix wanted both of those to be major players. So mm -hmm. you know, all the strangers could surprise and become that, and maybe that can be something. But also, I think it usually comes from. A little bit because who directed all of us strangers andrew hay 
No offense to Mr. Hay. I usually feel like when we have these sort of searchlight double headers, they come from established filmmakers. At least one semi established. He's not hugely established. Just, but you know, yeah. people who generally you could maybe like have either. I feel like he's Oscar waiting for his nominated for an Oscar before. Or at least you they're like have name recognition because I, I believe Mark McDonough was nominated for writing. Mm -hmm. I think in Bruges, right? Probably. Probably. I think Andrew Hay is waiting for his Oscar moment. And I think he'll be nominated for screenplay here. So yeah. maybe that will then allow him to even level up to the next level on his next film in terms of awards. Um, I am. I never believed, honestly, in Spider-Verse in picture. I know that's something most people believed in. I have current money bets that I'm looking to win on, I think, at this point, because people were so confident in Spider-Verse getting into best picture. Not looking so good right now. Um. I just, it's an animated part one superhero film. I never really thought it was going to be a huge picture contender. I think picture and score, or animated um, and score are its only shots at nominations, to be honest. And even at if this point, the boy and the heron reviews. Low, I could see in some. There's in never some been an animated way. film that's not like stop motion that's gotten into visual effects. I'm just so saying, I think that's the only other category. I they'll go for Quantumania before they go for Spider Verse oh, in that category. Um, if I'm being yes, honest. I feel the same way with Jack. I I just never. I think the problem was that. It, and listen, all due respect, I love the movie. It's currently in my top ten of the year, but it doesn't really have an ending. It kind of has a mm -hmm. beginning. Um, but that doesn't help when you're trying to sell the movie independently as being worthy of this. And if you want to tell me Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, or inevitably Doom Part Two, maybe next year, maybe not. You know, that's a whole other thing. But um, hopefully next year. I think that it helps that the first one got into Best Picture. You know, the first one, the first one made the whole thing worthy. Where Spider Man did not, the, Into the Spider Verse did not get into Best Picture. We have no reason to think it was on the outside looking in. And so, no. yeah, I just don't think it's it so hard for an animated film to get in at this point. I mean, even in the years of Expanded 10 lately, it's still animated movies still don't get in. They look down. So couldn't get in during the pandemic. I think that's mm -hmm. all you need to know that they just do not like animation comes below f foreign language films. Like if they just do not look at them as best pictures unfortunately so i wish that would change there have been mm -hmm. a couple times when i think an animated film was the best picture of the year and should have won um mm -hmm. but there's nothing i just don't think if any movie's going to do it i don't think i don't think it'll be spider-man 2 maybe the third one maybe the third one could maybe get campaign in a return if it gets great movie. reviews but i i don't know i just i think that people are and also we're not in dire need of people movies that people have seen I mean, no, people will have forgotten about it yeah. by the end of the year. With this incredible festival season, no one's thinking of Spider Verse really outside of animated feature, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I, I would agree with that this is giving indie vibes. Um, all of us strangers? In terms of those. Yeah, all yeah, all of us strangers after Sun. After Sun is a great comp for this. I think. I, I think, like After Sun, it could still get one nomination, which I would say is adapted screenplay. It could be one of it's a competitive that, category. You know, that's that's possible where like that happens most lot, years where it's just a screenplay. lot of times when the only nomination a film gets is in screenplay. So I could see that happening yeah. for this movie. Um, yeah. And then we'll see. I think this is going to be one yeah. the critics are going to need to come and support. I think the critics totally will. I just still don't think it'll be strong enough at the end of the day. But I, well, I my think I'm question to you before we move on to the next one is. Mm -hmm. This, okay, let me ask you this. Why do you think the critics supported Mad Max Fury Road to such a degree? Do you, do you think they had to like give it the veneer of this is a, an awards movie, this is something to take seriously, or did they really love the movie? Now, of course, it can be both. Because my question is, was because Oppenheimer has performed way better box office-wise than Mad Max Fury Road, mm -hmm. is there the drive to give Killian Murphy, best actor from critics groups to award Oppenheimer in that way, because I'm still trying to figure out is Oppenheimer like just guaranteed. It's just one of these years that we're just nothing comes close to it. And the I don't think it's guaranteed at this point. I just, I don't, I don't know. Cause I do think that like when it comes to the critics groups, are they going to lean into Barbenheimer? Are they going to lean into, you know, the color purple or are they going to kind of just, I think the critics groups, Lily Gladstone, these type of players, are they going to pop up at all for the critics? I think they'll be nominated. I think 
looking at actor and the contenders and actor, honestly, I do think Murphy would probably still be the big, the most criticky performance of all of those, unless Andrew Scott is nominated. I, I don't think he'll win still, even at the Critics Awards. Um, I think Oppenheimer, I think the critics in terms of picture would more likely go for poor things before they go for Oppenheimer or a smaller film like All of Us Strangers, Anatomy of a Fallen Zone of Interest, which we won't be talking about but because it already premiered, but continue to get great reviews. Um, I I mean, it's hard being the front runner this far out, but I just right I'm, now... I'm worried, but at the same time, with my conversations with people in the industry, like it's almost like, it feels like Hillary 2016. Like literally, they just oh, say, God. Oh yeah, uh -huh. he's gonna win. And Christopher Nolan will win and the movie will win Best Picture. Oh yeah, of course. Like it just yep. like it's so like people like Roma. Like, Oscars have already yeah, happened. And that's why it's like uh, well, that's different. No, it is not a lot of people saw Roma. People have seen Oppenheimer. Yeah. Um yeah, I'm just I'm I'm really because I do think it's a singular thing, so it could just have a singular trajectory and just hold the entire time i imagine schindler's list was very similar that year probably and, it, yeah. and that helped because of course he also had jurassic park that year and the box office hit that nolan also had this year was oppenheimer um so i could see it just happening and just people being like it's time but at the same time i'm i'm just like it's Jul what was it july people made it the front runner and can it really like can it really i think it could have ebbs like, and flows so like maybe could. once but it's Killers of the Flower Moon comes out, people will be like, oh no, no, that's it. And but it at the end of the day, seeing Killers of the Flower Moon, like people saw yeah. that before they saw Oppenheimer. So it's not the same people that I think are saying that Oppenheimer could win Best Picture, not us. But a lot of those same yeah. people have already seen Killers of the Flower Moon. Yeah, that's definitely true. the top, you know, pundits have seen both. So I don't know. They have, just, yeah. I'm just intrigued because I think all the strangers going back to this film could be the type of thing that the critics get behind. But also I'm just like, they will. how much are they going to do? Like, will the critics group go for Ryan Gosling in supporting actor? You know, that's I something so. they could do. You know, the I same think the critics group would go for, I think was something that they were. Yeah. I think they'd go for Gosling before they go for Downey, to be honest. And so that is, actor. yeah. Downey is definitely a, a legacy. Jamie Lee Curtis. It's a Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah. Better performance. <laughs> I'm than that, equating but, the performances. Yeah. I think his performance yeah. is fantastic, but I'm just saying that it's the type of win of like, he's winning. If for the he's family. able to campaign. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he'll, that do, would, I mean, he, he'll, well, if he's able to, he'll campaign. He'll campaign. Well, if he's, if the strike oh, doesn't well. stop it. <laughs> Listen, if he, if, if there, if we're still on strike come the time he needs a campaign, we're not having an Oscars. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um, I don't think I don't think she's going to. From all the reviews I've seen from the film, she seems pretty clearly supporting. To be honest, the I, question I don't can. Think so. Yes, Michelle Williams. She can. Yes, put in lead. So she. There's your lesson right there. Um, she wants she? to lose an Oscar that she is already probably going to win. Yeah, because I, I, I think, think her biggest competition. We have to see color purple. I currently have. Would be Daniel Brooks. Brooks. I don't oh, know. Oh, really? I think based on the roles, Daniel Brooks would be Badier. We'll see. Because, I mean, Taraji P. Henson has more of, like, I don't know. She has more like, of a name. She has more, a, <laughs> a little bit more of a name. And also, just from my history. Because I, I believe, da correct me, isn't Daniel Brooks playing the Oprah Winfrey character from I the original? So. I don't know. Maybe I'm getting confused. I don't know. My history of the show is that the, the media role is Taraji P. Henson. Um, cause that's oh. the role that's actually in the relationship with Seeley. I believe Brooks role is the one that has won though. Well, okay. Well, we'll I'll do my research on color purple history, but I don't know. I, we'll see what happens, but I feel like color Either purple way, Gladstone's and, and then Emily Blunt is your biggest competition. And I don't think Blunt's going to win though. No, but that's what I'm saying. So like, I think that you're going to, why would Lily Gladstone want to fight Emma Stone and Carrie Mulligan? And, yeah. Rather you know, than maybe the stronger color purple performance, you know, she's not going to watch, especially if her performance is truly supporting, which it seems like it is. Um, I mean, yeah. we'll see. She's definitely a lead character in the book. Um, but, um, you know, it's 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 also three and a half hours. So a supporting performance in a three and a half hour movie, I'm sure will feel like a lead performance in anything else. Um, but I think, listen, it's all semantics and award politics mahershala ali one supporting actor for a movie that he was the lead of yeah so yeah. you know it happens this, you know. this is funny this would be awesome if emma Stone and ryan gosling 
won their Oscars the same year, La La Land reunion. Yes, that would be that would be great. Um, that's this is true. Henson is a previous nominee, so that does help her, and she could get Judy Dench or Judd Hirsch. They do. Um, I love all these do. like verbs and these like phrases. It, <laughs> yes, that's how we instead of like saying long sentences, oh, we just. Course. Be, make well, I'm, I'm a long-winded person by nature. Long-time viewers know this. <laughs> Moving on to the next one. <laughs> oh, now we're just doing some movies that um I don't think will be huge contenders. So I've just put them together. I don't think I think Ferrari could contend for. I mean, they love their racing car movies. Um, for a sound nomination, I think that's really it. I don't think the killer is going to get anything. Um, and. I think maybe a uh, hitman people have highlighted the screenplay. I don't know if it will end up in original or adapted. If it's an original, I could see it getting nominated. If it's an adapted, I don't think it will. Yeah. So um, I think the killer is going to be a little too um, commercial. We'll see what happens with that. It's also on Netflix, which again, doesn't help when you have a commercial movie vying for some awards attention. Netflix um, has like 10 other bigger contenders than this. Yeah. Ferrari, the only other one, I mean, we should mention is Adam Driver. He's a two-time Oscar nominee. I think it's I, worth mentioning Penelope Cruz before we mention Adam I Driver. Agree. People have raved about her performance. Have them, while you have her on there. I'm just saying out of those ones, oh, I, it, yes, I, hey, Adam Driver's the other one. But yes, I think mm-hmm. Penelope, it's Penelope Cruz. She could always mm-hmm. get it, and I would not be surprised. Yeah, um, I don't think I'm she will. You, which is, where do you think Sandra Huller, Huller I've, I think we'll, we'll learn how, how to pronounce her name appropriately, where do you have her currently? Do you have her in supporting for Zone of Interest, lead for Anatomy of a Fall, both, neither? Because I feel like she'll probably get in one place. I don't think she really has much of a shot at all getting in for supporting for Zone of Interest. I don't think that will be a huge acting contender in general. It seems like very subtle performances. Um, I have, we'll talk about it in a second. I have her barely missing in actress okay. just because uh, I just, they don't go for foreign performances when it's not from big name people usually i can't even think of a i feel like it why. helps given that both of those movies are like on the cusp of best picture and that she's in both mm-hmm. it could like be like oh who's this you know oh it's somebody i just saw in this other movie so we'll see um there's yeah. one movie we didn't talk she's about able to campaign too like if yeah. the strike goes on she's still able to campaign unlike sure. most actors there's one movie we didn't talk about yet i don't know if it's in your slideshow that i think we should talk about um which one is that which is origin the new uh, yes. internet there we go um, I think this is going to be her first movie since Selma, not counting a wrinkle in time, which I do not think, you know, maybe she was wanting to be an Oscar player, but really this is her first big Oscar player. Was a commercial play, yeah. Um, and I think I would put more <laughs> into that movie than maybe others are predicting. I think that, um, she is definitely a name director. She's done a lot with television and documentaries. I think she's built up a a, a certain uh, brand for herself that I think is rare for female directors. I think this is a really important story starring a recent Oscar nominee, Anjanou Ellis, um, Mm -hmm. now Anjanou Ellis Taylor. Um, It's a King Richard reunion with her and John Bernthal. Yes. So I could see, I could see this sneaking in. I currently have it in, but that's also because I just want to pick something that's not the top 10 Gold Derby. Have it in where? In Best Picture? I, I currently put it in Best Picture, but and mostly because I just want to find something. Because I know the nominations do you have I, for it? I think that it's, I think picture is likely. Um, I think actress could be something. They obviously liked Don Janu Ellis and King Richard. I think my thing, because I also I I don't think do you think Margot Robbie's happening or no? I do, yeah. Okay. I mean Greta Gerwig gotten the lead nominations in for her two previous films i think it'll be a huge contender i think margot robbie's the face of the whole film i think she'll i'm probably... i'm interested and this is again completely different performances you know i just worry that she's the tom cruise of just like them not seeing like especially because ryan gosling seems to be such the standout i listen i think margot robbie is the necessary glue to that movie i would nominate her maybe over ryan gosling um, she gave the better performance i think yeah but so i just wonder like when it comes down to it, will people, and as she's being nominated as producer, like, will they see, like, what's her Oscar moment other than crying on the bench, which isn't like a big, it's not like I'm just Ken. So I just worry with that, especially if maybe Anjanou Ellis can get a scene like that. 
um, but maybe I currently have Greta Lee. So maybe I take Greta Lee out for past lives. Ooh, and Robbie I Patrick. would definitely do that. Yeah. Um, we'll see. I, I do. Th I give that movie a little bit more credit than you do. I still think that the critics could help it. It could be this sort of A24 little indie hit. Um, it played well. It's very mixed, though, from the critics. It seems like people either love it or aren't huge fans of it. I think Neon also has, like, Neon has a bigger person to campaign in Best Actress alone with Anatomy of a Fall. So, yeah. I, I, I think it'll be. Origin is Neon as well, correct? It is, yeah. That is so Neon. Yeah. They're so they have. Thing. Um, and then, so yeah. But they so also they playing... have Anatomy of a Fall to prioritize in, like, Best Actress as opposed to Origin. I don't think they'll be able to campaign. Neon I, isn't strong enough to do I that. I would be interested to see what they end up prioritizing because I do think that an Ava DuVernay movie might be easier to get people within Hollywood to get behind. I think Anatomy of a Fall, I don't know. Based on the way people have talked about this film, I don't know how academy friendly it will be versus Anatomy of a Fall. I think the only thing detracting from it is that it's not all in English, but it's like 50. 9% foreign language so like as Arthur mentioned it's a lot of it it's in English so I think I think that really helps Absolutely. the film as well we'll see but um, um yeah I just think that I, I have an eye out on this one just because I also think that the fact the idea that we're going to currently on September 8th predict with the top 10 and it's never going to change doesn't sit right with not, me I don't think no, that's it's possible. Not happen. So I'm picking just one out of left field movie that I think could do it and I don't as much as I love her I don't think Sofia Coppola is going to be that type of Movie. No, so no. Um, Sa great reviews though. Great reviews for the film. I'm looking forward to it. it. Seems like a take on the Elvis family story. I would enjoy more than the one that came out last year. Um, but I don't <laughs> think after all of last season, what I still love is that you don't really like that movie. I don't like that movie. No, I just thought Austin Butler had very good Oscar chances, and um, just like I probably that it ended up losing. <laughs> yeah, that's insane how it went home empty-handed. It was expected to win like three. half of Best Picture went home empty-handed. Yeah, that's everything everywhere for you. Yeah. But I think Priscilla will be widely liked by a lot of people. I think it'll be. I think both of these movies are considered like step ups for um their for these directors compared to their previous last few pieces of work um but i don't think I mean, they were going to be big enough to be very well i think if it had not because that was yeah the same but she did like three movie. things after that um and she did 13th listen she's a very interesting filmmaker because she just doesn't, she is she doesn't stick to one type of thing so that's why like listen if this movie you know 72 is not the best metacritic score but it's not the worst and i think that given the type of film and what its subject is I don't know. It could be something that is a little bit it it like you. I think the thing with Ava DuVernay is that she's always the type of filmmaker that when you hear that she has a movie, you're drawn in a little bit, or or a project. Um, I think that she has this sort of like sort of trust in her name, A Wrinkle in Time, excused. Um, yeah. But we'll see. Um, uh, to me, I'm just I, I'm intrigued with that just because I think a lot of these other movies, like I can more or less, as we're talking about, kind of predict their trajectories. Where this is a little bit, I don't know, and that maybe that interests me. Maybe again, as I always say, in September you can have fun with these sort of things yeah. and you don't know how they're going to play out, just because you need to talk about something other than Oppenheimer. It gets so much it easier later awesome. on in the year. This is the time of year to have fun for sure. Yeah, um, I do think being able to campaign will help. Um, <laughs> I don't know if both of them get in. We'll talk about our picture predictions in a second. I think one of also, them. Also, Robert, is a I like little... your, I like your profile. Oh yes, yes. I didn't even notice that. Um, Anjanu Ellis Taylor. Yeah, I believe she did get married. Is why. Yes. Um, is it hyphen it there? We'll see. We'll see. We'll talk about that. Um, I mentioned Tom Cruise type. Um, I think Mark Robbie is more respected as an actress than Tom Cruise is as an actor, and I think. She's also oh, no. gave a better performance for our for our generation. Maybe Tom Cruise is an actor with a capital A, and I think he was just not lately. Well, is he? Listen, I don't. Mark Robbie was nominated within like the last like multiple times within the last five years. Tom Cruise for Top Gun. Listen, she was nominated for I Tanya, which fantastic. In hindsight, given that Francis won three years later, she probably should have won that year. Oh, she should have won. Um, but. And then, you know, Bombshell, which was not a Best Picture contender. Neither was I, Tanya. So this would be her first nomination with a Best Picture uh, nomination. It almost it strengthens her, wouldn't you think? Her film's in Best Picture. I don't know. I She's just, I feel... Producer. I just, 
something about it seems because this is the thing barbie is this unexpected force and so i shouldn't doubt it we've doubted it before and look what it's been able to achieve but something mm -hmm. about it when you look at the women that are in this lineup i just i think the thing with her performance is that she is kind of the reactive force that she's kind of playing this the straight woman so that everybody else can be absurd and have fun and like Ryan Gosling, you know, she's the one that America Ferreira gives the monologue to. She doesn't get to give the monologue. And I think in the end, I'm thinking of like the men who are going to have to vote on this category. Are they going to see, think that Margot Robbie as Barbie is the type of performance that's going to win this category? I, it just, to Not me, win. or just, to never win. but you need people who think she's number one to get into the category. That's my thing. And I, I think there'll be enough Barbie lovers. I don't think they'll put her at number one, but they'll have her pretty safely in there. I don't know. If, they, if, if you're a Barbie lover, she's already nominated for producer, and you're nominating Ryan Gosling, I don't know. I think she could just very easily miss. The same way that Tom Cruise, okay. even though he was the face of Top Gun Maverick, lost out to a smaller movie in Paul Mescal. And I think he obviously was probably the more deserving person to be put in for best actor. I worry. Over Paul Mescal? No, Paul Mescal was the oh, worst okay. because okay. he was the smaller okay, movie. Good. He didn't need the extra push. Margot Robbie does not need the extra push. Again, I would probably put her in above Gosling. I think it's the harder performance. I think it's the performance that deserves a lot of yeah. respect, and she willed that movie into its being. But I still, I still worry because I. You look at like things like Parasite, like Parasite being this big force in picture and winning all these Oscars. But but that's like we said. The actress branch don't nominate foreign performances. I don't think that's True. really a big correlation there. I think I think Margot Robbie has enough of performance moments in there as the face of the movie. I don't think like I could see her missing. She's like by four or five, but right now I, I think she's pretty safe. We'll see. I just um, there's also like Angela Bassett. Like it's a genre movie. I think we're we're forgetting that. You know, it doesn't leave the genre ness behind just because it's an Oscar front runner. Yeah, it's, but Black it's Panther wasn't an overall movie. contender. What? Black Panther wasn't a big overall picture contender. But Angela I would, Bassett. I would still argue Angela Bassett was a stronger contender in her category than Margot Robbie could ever be in Best Actress. Yeah, but I don't think, I think. Oh, it just, yeah. like, I don't think if that, I just feel very worried about her because like Golden Globes will get, give her a nomination because they have comedy, <laughs> the comedy Sag category. Sag will. Sag could, I'm not, you know, they probably. Sag. Popular. Yeah. Um, but also the question that, is, though. Uh, ensemble too is Barbie an ensemble player that could help. Oh yeah, it could win that. Um, mm. That or Color Purple. That's the only thing. Or Oppenheimer. Yeah. Oppenheimer is an all white cast. I don't think they're going to go there. So oh, Spotlight was an all white cast. Yeah, but that's the billboards that's, was pretty much an all white a cast. decade ago. Trial of the Chicago Seven was close to an all white cast. I can keep going. Yeah, not all white. Close to it. But that was also COVID year. I don't know. And also, I don't know. based on history, so it, it, it's not like they chose to like only no cast. no i just think sag is um more aware of that i don't know listen everything sag. everywhere happened and we're better for it and i think barbie has proven itself at every moment i just don't want to be in a situation where now we're doing the opposite of like oh my god barbie's in for everything like barbie is still going to be a little bit of a sell for some people you know it's not people love it but it's you know it's it's still not going to be this I, out of the four movies that you have that could get 10 plus, I think Barbie is the one that I'm most worried about hitting that benchmark. You know, Killers, Pat, Poor Things, and Oppenheimer, I think, are going to do it before Barbie does. I, I'm just, we'll, we'll see. We've never seen a movie like this. There's no comp for Barbie. So <laughs> I'm worried. No. no. Um, I personally like Gosling's performance more, but I'm not huge on either of them. Um, I know I, you like Downey. Oh yeah, uh, Downey to me is he starts the movie as this sort of lovable guy that we know him, and by the end of it, he becomes Nurse Ratched for the 21st century. I think he's and he listen. I love Ryan Gosling. I love Barbie. Barbie's my third favorite movie of the year. I, I have nothing against this movie. I will be shocked, shocked if Ryan Gosling wins any award, especially one of the major ones. Oh, over he might win the Golden Globe. Maybe. I would count him out for that. Um, I don't think he's going to win the Oscar, but I wouldn't totally count him out at this point. Um, I think Nyad is an acting contender. That's really it. I think Benning or Foster or Bust is really all I would say at this point. Um, 
And yes, I cry about it every day. I think less so than Jack is. <laughs> yeah. Jack yeah, is very I just, I don't like that movie in the slightest. That's one of the worst movies that came out last year. So the fact that it has two Oscars I is mean, insane to I me. agree with you, but still. I don't, yeah. I, listen, I don't get that mad about any of this stuff. It's fun. It's a way to talk. No, I'm about not that mad about it. But yeah. um, I will definitely, like the things I get mad about are like the whole Chadwick Boseman kerfuffle of like what they did with like yeah. the NFTs and then they rearrange the, like that I'll get mad about because that's like people trying to make something out of nothing. And then, you know, insulting people, you know, if you insult, yeah. that's why like the most times I'll get mad is like when they cut, when they cut the speeches short so they can do some stupid bit like that. I'm like, that's not the point of the night. Mm. You're not winning anybody yeah. over. So just put yeah. on a good show, honor the people. Um, so yeah. Killian Murphy is my father in case anyone didn't know. Um, <laughs> very common last name so sadly i'm not related um if only yeah they don't recognize yeah if only i agree um yeah i don't think i don't think so i will bet you my, i think rdj is locked it is such he has for a nomination scene. yes for the win he has the scene i'm he not gonna say this far scene. out he i will call it now i will call i will lock it in he has the scenes he has the legacy I think he is one of the most respected and don't listen as much as people like despise the MCU. I don't think they blame him. If anything, they respect him because of what he was able to achieve. No, on they despise, alone. they despise the MCU post him dying. Most yes, people didn't despise true. the MCU. But like prior to Endgame, I think people really admire, like, cause you look at like what the MCU is. It's all because of that performance in that first Iron Man. Like he, I think Christopher Nolan even said it. Like it's one of the most important castings in the history of Hollywood. He is such a well-regarded figure going back to the days of like, he should have, he should have probably won for Chaplin, but we hadn't given it to Al Pacino yet. And that was the year we finally gave Al Pacino his Oscar. So like he's been working hard, indies, big budget, everything. He has the narrative. He's part of the Hollywood royalty. I just don't think, how can anything beat that? Like, I love- I'm just saying it's September. Do, but like- It's September. I know it's September, but you know, it was September for a lot of other people too. It was September for Brad yeah. Pitt, wasn't it? Same it was, category. Yeah. yeah, I and mean- he at least one best picture. Robert J.K. Jenny Simmons- there are some people who just sweep this the category. category. I think often you can lock in early because usually it's character actors from beloved figures that we've loved their entire careers, and they finally get this role that we've been waiting for them to get. It's a, to me, it's a no-brainer, and I think it helps that the person coming up underneath him is going to be in a is is a person who's much has much is younger. He has the chance to find his Oppenheimer. You know, it's not like he's going up against Brad Pitt or something. That performance isn't something there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, His performance is great, but like Melissa McCarthy lost to Octavia Spencer. So like they, and that would be They're not going to give him the win. Yeah. Uh, I think the whale is worse than the sun. Honestly. I never saw the sun because why would I go see a movie that has no Oscar chances that everybody's saying is bad? Like I, the priorities. Well, it was bad. Yes, it was bad. Um, and yeah, I think Mark Ruffalo is pretty safe for a nomination. I don't think that's another comedic leaning performance to be honest from what i've read so i don't think he would win <laughs> but that would make for a fun actors on actors pairing variety and also ruffalo would probably vote for downey like i i don't think people understand how or maybe they do because i listen i'm not that i i'm not i don't know that much about the industry as far as being in the middle but i people loved robert downey jr like they just oh, yeah. love him and he's so like since 2007 since his like return like you watch him like i remember watching him on kimmel and like if pom clementioff wasn't talking a lot he would just ask pom a question to get her involved in the conversation like he's so well respected in this industry and people just love him and love what he does and i also he is responsible in part for making oppenheimer a box office hit he is the number one movie star so i think he is looked at as helping to give this movie the support and also he does something completely against type which is that you he makes you hate him he makes you hate him like that alone yeah. is worthy of this type of prestige yeah, yeah. sorry this is gonna I be agree. my soapbox i just think it's i i it's september 8th i usually don't like saying this i think it's over it was over the minute i saw it i honestly felt the same way about him that i felt about mahershala ali and like moonlight 
Like it's one, it's type uh, same category. A lot of these performances, you just know it the second you see it. And I just, I felt it as soon as I left the theater, it's over. Yeah. I'm a bit more with Basil here. I honestly could name two or three other supporting actor performances in that film. I like more, but, but I think RDJ does have this out the best because when I'm wrong, spot. when I'm wrong, come March, clip this out and then you can repost it in my face. When, um, I don't know who else would win when someone else ends up winning. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't know. I don't really know who else, but <laughs> let's move on to. Oh, we should also. I mean, Venice winners are announced tomorrow, so I guess we. I, I can just quickly show what I think it's going to win. I was like, do you? Did they tip you off, Jack? <laughs> yeah. Here, here are the winners. I'm. I'm going to be that accurate. These are all of the people who are going to win next uh, or tomorrow. Um, I think Paul thinks is pretty obviously winning the Golden Lion. The, there hasn't been anything as praised as that there. Um, Green Border got great reviews. I, I could see that or The Beast potentially winning. So I have them getting like second place jury prizes. Um, yeah. I, they usually go for foreign performances. So I have Mads and Leah Sadu. Uh, actress is tough. I mean, it could be Leah Sadu. It could be Jessica Chastain for Memory. It could be Carrie Mulligan for Maestro. It could be Anjanou Ellis for um, Origin. I don't think it'll be Emma Stone because I think if when you win Golden Lion, you can't win any other category. But if Golden Lion does go to something else, then it probably will be Emma Stone. Um, yeah, and I think Kaylee Spaney makes sense for the like young actor award. And yeah, any thoughts on what we'll end up winning tomorrow? I mean, listen, I never the Golden Globes are hard enough to predict because it's a small group. You think. You know, just yeah. get into the head. What is Damien Chazelle like? You know, I, he likes Emma Stone. I saw a funny tweet that said, you know, will Damien Chazelle snub Emma Stone because oh, she snubbed yeah. him from Babylon? It's like the, the idea that anybody would think that is the reason that oh, they're she still friends. Been, or just like, like Emma Stone, I, I guarantee you. And I listen, I love, love, will always love Emma Watson. For, till the day I die, she helped me discover I love movies with Harry Potter. I saw Deathly Hallows Part 2 at Cinemark last night. It was fantastic. If Emma Watson was the original cast as Mia, I do not think La La Land... Oh, Emma Stone's a much better actress. Emma Stone made La La Land into what that movie was. And so, Tammy Chazelle is a she won to Emma Stone for the rest she, of his life. <laughs> she won at Venice, the Volpe Cup for that movie here. So that also exactly. works against her, like, to be honest. Don't, like, you know. <laughs> and I think it was a joke, but still, it's the idea that Oh, it was happened. totally a joke, yeah. The idea. There's Listen, no beef there or anything between some them. Some people would think that. There's some, uh, the, probably. the conspiracies that go into the Oscars sometimes. It's just, it's so funny. It is. People like, have too much time on their people hands. People thought that Marissa Tomei didn't actually win. Uh, they didn't want to admit it, so then they just went along with it, and they never corrected it. It's like, yeah, no! And that's now we know happened. that that's not true, because they would have sent Jordan Horowitz to just say, Moonlight, you won Best Picture. Yeah. We now know what happened. Exactly. They're the wrong name. We'll see what happens here tomorrow. will be interesting. Um... And we can quickly talk about these categories. Best picture, that's what I have right now. I think those 11 and 12 are the ones looking on the outside. The zone of interest, I just, based on the reviews, think I might be a little too artsy for them. I think, to be honest, compared to Anatomy of the Fall as the can for <laughs> film contender, which I think will appeal to them more. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I'm still holding on to May, December for Netflix. So I think that's got acting and screenplay potential. So I think that can get in. And Netflix gets two in most years, besides last year. They almost I mean, always get two in. Listen, I know you would say that in a year of 10, Carol would have gotten in, which I agree, probably likely. Yeah. Why do you think Carol didn't get in, is the question, because I think that question will answer what happens with May December. Because Carol had period, know. it had the performance, it had six nominations. It's like... Why didn't get it? Was it really just because it starred two lesbians like that? The, that the story. No, I just don't. I don't know if it was high enough on anyone's list. I think it probably was on a lot of people's lists, but it probably wasn't like a huge passion vote. I don't think May December will be either, but I think in year of ten, it can still sneak in, mm -hmm. like Carol probably would have. Um, yeah. Also, Robert, I, I I know I was big on Michelle Williams, but also to be fair, this was before we knew that everything everywhere was going to be accepted. But again, I think I honestly think. Everything Everywhere, like 
2020 is going to be an anomalous year. I just don't think we can look to a film winning seven. It was seven, I right? Mean, Oppenheimer could this year. It was seven. Like above the line. I mean, listen, if Emily Blunt goes along for the ride, if well, no, I mean, like seven I overall, mean, like no, picture, seven, director, I actor. I I think Murphy and Downey are possible, very possible. Mm-hmm. If they're really in the mood for it, and Emily Blunt is happening, especially because look look at what happened. Like Angela Bassett, you know, of course, has been around long enough, but also Jamie Lee Curtis is, you know, if people are like, oh my God, since Double Wars Prada, we've loved Emily Blunt. Like, listen, I, I don't think it's out of That's the realm true. of possibility. She did win SAG for a Quiet Place. Like, there's a lot of love for Emily Blunt. I mean, I'm just saying it could happen, but I, I, everything everywhere is such an anomalous movie, such an anomalous event that it's. I doubt it. I was not expecting that to happen in September. I don't think anybody was. And so, and also Michelle Williams just completely fumbled that whole, I don't think there's a situation where Downey goes lead and completely ruins the possibilities of his Oscar chance. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Um, Price and Cat were entitled to our opinions, but I definitely disagree. (laughs) I agree with one half of this statement. And it was and the half that ended up last nominated. Year, Jack needs to be around more Jewish mothers because I guess <laughs> I guess I do. Michelle Williams nailed. That. I guess I do. Um, <laughs> that's true. Um, yeah, I don't think I don't think it will, but I, it's got more tech potential than everything ever did. I think, to be honest. So, what do you think? You want to we'll call see. it? Want to call it now? Because I do think how many? Both agree how, many it'll win. how many do you think oh, it'll win? On I think it'll win. Picture director actor supporting actor i think it misses screenplay because it's got director um i think they'll give that to one of the other contenders so then cinematography yep score sound editing and score so seven or no eight 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 categories what do you think gets visual effects now that dune is gone probably the creator oh the creator or guardians yeah well, that would be great. I think if I, Oppenheimer I gets nominated, movie. it could win. I don't think yeah. it'll be nominated. Though. I this is very rare for us. I think I agree with you 100. I currently have it at, at eight wow. um, yeah. wins, which would which be shows, incredible. Shows to prove that it's not going to happen, considering we're I, we're that far. We're, listen, we've never seen. If this gets to 900 million, which I think is likely, I think there is such respect for what he achieved that I just don't see how you can deny it. I, again, from what I was, I was at, at school and we, they brought in one of like the major people who like does testing for movies. And mm-hmm. he was just like, he was talking about it. Like, yeah, I think Oppenheimer was like a half an hour too long. And, you know, it was a little slow in places, but it'll win best picture. Of course, you know, no, yeah. no doubts about it. So like, it just seems that, and maybe, maybe it's Hillary 2016. I don't know because I'm always scared of this. Stop stuff. reminding me of that year. That's true. What do you want? It's um, I have to say it. Something else. Something I can't else. not say it because if not, I'm. It's like I'm reverse jinxing myself. Like I'm. I'm yes. saying it so that then I jinx the jinx. Um, but we'll see. I. I. I hope. I really hope. Thank you. We appreciate that. I don't Thank know about you. that, but we appreciate it very we much. Share so. custody of our of our Oscar. I mean, I would take it, and you can <laughs> you can have photos of it. Just give um, me the little, just give me the plaque and you can keep it. I'll give you the plaque. There you there go. There we go. There we go. Um, I think past lives, I just don't think it's, I think it's screenplays. It's only realistic nomination, sadly, at this point. Uh, let's we'll see what see. the critics do. The critics could say that. I, I remember last time I didn't think it could get in and you were like blasphemous and now we've kind of swapped. Um, yeah. I don't know because I, I think, think it'll also, get in. I just don't think it's going to be like a top five contender. We have such big movies we need a couple yeah. of small films i feel to just balance this out <laughs> and yeah. if you don't have a zone of interest um i think that'd be fall, like past life's anatomy of a fall yeah yeah i could see yeah also I, I don't know how strong may december is so i think i think past lives it's it's the one that makes you cry out of these barbie too um so we'll see we'll see yeah. but I, i'm it's also listen if a24 just really goes all in you know it, they could do it i think they could get I think A24 could run a marriage story type campaign, get a couple acting, screenplay, and then pick yeah. That's possible. Potentially, yeah. Um, next up, acting. <coughs> I'm not super confident in any of this, but 
Let's start with actress. I think Emma Stone. I have um, Annette Bening and Natalie Portman sharing the one spot for Netflix, not in a Best Picture movie spot. I'm not um, sure which of them. I love that we have, like, this is the most crossover we've ever had because we agree on who's the front runner in all the categories. Oh, nice. Who do you, who do you have different in actress? Uh, out of the five? Um, yeah, five, six there, I guess. Emma, Fantasia, Fantasia, I do. Uh, who do I have? Well, I, I don't I have think, Robbie, right? I think I just, Robbie's on the bubble. I think Origin, again, let's see what happens with that because I think Anjou Ellis could be something. Um, I think Carrie Mulligan definitely. There's one other person. Oh, and Greta Lee. Central Central. I have all these names, you know. Yeah. And I, I'm not I against Margot Robbie. I just think that I, I'm, you know, listen, I thought she was going to get in for Babylon. She didn't get in. I thought she was going to get in. Like, there, I feel like we've, she's, sub, for some reason, we seem to pass her over. And this is such a commercial performance, too. Like, it doesn't, like, I feel like Melissa McCarthy's don't happen in lead very rarely. No, those type of like bridesmaids think... type performances they did but also you could argue they just they don't make those type of performances in lead you know barbie is a very unique movie so we'll see what happens i'm root listen i love margot robbie nothing would make me happier than to see her get in here for this category which she deserves yeah i think honestly sandra huller will win more of the critics awards in this category than Greta Lee. so i don't think that is going to help her at the end of the day um cooper is very possible I like I just it's those have two. Faith I, I don't think anybody it's those else two. Is close. Yeah. DiCaprio already has one. I don't think it's time. Giamatti. Eh. Um Welcome back, Domingo. Welcome yeah, to welcome the back. Table. Yeah. Um no. I just worry with Sandra Huller about foreign performances once again. She could still get in there. She's my number six. It's very close, but I just the acting branch doesn't really go for foreign performances from people who aren't big names, is my worry. It's a, but as our our, our commenters have mentioned a lot of it right is in predominantly english so it does help yeah that does help that's a good does distributor i do think natalie portman has a very juicy baby role um from what people have I said so see I, this. let's see how campy I, it is that's going to be our main i don't think it's going to be as campy as people have said i know but, but we'll and, see and it has the marriage story release date so it could do it very well i, I think it will i've still got it in picture and multiple action categories yeah that actor five is the same five everyone has. Supporting actress, Gladstone's winning. The two color purple ladies, Divine Joy Randolph and Julianne Moore or Jodie Foster. Is what you I need think. to put Emily Blunt in your supporting actress. It's happening. I she think she probably will get in, but I think I could also see her being one of those people who gets nominated everywhere pre Oscars and then somehow misses come the Oscars. I don't. The thing that stopped her in 2018 is that they were both popular movies and she was number six for both of them, for Mary Poppins Returns and A Quiet Place. I think that they didn't know, it was not clear which one to pick her for, and so she got goose-egged. Mm -hmm. That's not happening. And also, I would argue she has a better scene than Killian Murphy does, as far as like the one scene that's going to get her in. Like, yeah. Like, Killian Murphy's the does. whole thing, of course, and he is the movie. Um, I'm actually taking my roommate to go see. He hasn't seen it yet, so um, that's oh, where wow. I'm going Right after this, I will have spent 24 hours in Oppenheimer. I'm very excited. It's incredible. Um, but yeah, I just the I don't like your phrase scene is probably a better scene it's than most of these yeah. people will have, other than maybe Lily Gladstone. So I think she's I dead. wouldn't doubt the color purple clips that are going to be in that movie. And I think Divine Joy Randolph will have some baby moments in terms of what her character is going through. I think it's competitive, and I, I could see Blunt missing, but I mean, she's I, I would not put Jodie right. Foster and Nyad as an also Rand and not Emily Blunt. That's true. I, I should have her as an also end. Yeah. But, if you're going to put Jodie Foster, you got to put Emily Blunt. That's true. That's true. Yeah. And then I have, I'm still confused with supporting actor. I've got seven plus people listed here. I have um, Downey, Gosling in that order, uh, over De then De Niro, then mm -hmm. Ruffalo, and then I put Willem Dafoe. Because I think if you're ever confused, you put in Willem Dafoe, especially when he's in a best picture contender. That could be your double nomination. And there's your double supporting. nomination. Because I think. It's Instead of never, color purple. Mm, depending on May December, if May December hits, then I think you get one color purple actress. If May December doesn't hit, then they both have a better chance. But if you if mm -hmm. if you if May December hits and Julianne Moore's in, then it's Gladstone, Blunt, Color Purple, Divine Joy Randolph, Julianne Moore. 
Yeah, and the thing is with the support, the double supporting nominations, it's almost always from a film that's like a top picture contender, which I would see more as um, poor things than The Color Purple at this point. So yeah, we'll have to see. Um, it is very subtle. I just he is the face of the movie. I think he like one of the big accomplishments of that movie is him. Um, I still think so, but maybe I'm just being optimistic and going with, think, with my heart. I think it's subtle. So was Casey Affleck. And yeah. that was all. I think they're probably similar actors as far as their position also as, and their movie. awareness of, of who they are. Yeah. That 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 might be a good comp as far as and they're going up against you know, Denzel had won twice. I think that's the thing. Bradley Cooper has not won yet. And if they think this is his time, this is his revenant, then Killian will have an uphill battle. But when you have people like Matt Damon saying that Killian Murphy delivers one of the greatest performances he has ever seen in the history of movies, if enough people keep saying that, it helps. If he wins, yeah, <laughs> if it wins SAG Ensemble, it helps. Because I also, I don't see a world where Nolan winning everything everywhere is not going to say all that starts with Killian Murphy. I, I, I don't know how you can award Oppenheimer in the seven other places that we think it's going to win and not give it to Oppenheimer. It's like actress with Michelle Yeoh last year. Yeah, um, and you know, yeah, it's it's subtle, but we're not against. You know, it's not like they're completely against subtlety, and also, and it's not totally subtle. There's some moments in there. I mean, he gets a a back and forth courtroom type of thing that, that there's mm -hmm. definitely moments i just think that that scene in the basketball court yeah like there's definitely moments where he gets to go all out i just think that and it speaks to his uh, just complete brilliance of a performance that's not what we can say like usually that's what is the best things like we remember from a performance it's these big moments it's not with him and i think that only speaks to how great of a performance it is him looking at water and puddles is let leave such and yeah. i think that's it it's it's a haunting performance it has the best yeah. of like a biopic performance and the best of a subtle performance both it's got both yeah that's true and last but not least directing this is my five right now <laughs> nolan's clearly gonna win i think his biggest competition is lanthimos rather than scorsese honestly Payne gets in when his movies are big contenders and there's always that one foreign can pick, and I think an Amelia Falls is a bigger contender overall that I'd go with Justin Triet over Jonathan Glazer. Jonathan Glazer is a bigger name, so I'm between those two. Mm -hmm. And Greta Gerwig, I wish she could get nominated, but they just don't go for the big commercial hits. In, in and directing. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, let me just say this, and I'll because this will save me in case I am wrong. They tend to have a difficult time nominating women who have already been nominated. Catherine Bigelow. Yeah, they don't. That's true. Yeah, I think Jane Campion might be, but that's also like I think of yeah. I'm not. I'm trying to think if she was she nominated for the piano. Maybe our comment. Oh, I believe she was. Yeah, right. I believe so. she's rare. But like, you know, Chloe Zhao really hasn't had an opportunity yet. But a lot mm -hmm. of times, like, I think it's hard for. But also, again, Barbie is a, a unique movie. I think. I really want to see her get in, but I also could see it as it being like a James Cameron type of thing where like, it's such a popular movie that they kind of discount her for it. Um, mm -hmm. We'll see. Cause she is the type of, I think it's interesting that her and Ava DuVernay are both going up for this because I do think that they're both filmmakers who often when the think pieces come out after the nominations, their names are headlining those pieces about like, why weren't female filmmakers like Ava DuVernay and Greta Gerwig in contention. And so it'll be interesting to see if one of them can duke it out um, as far as for the American. To fair name, no. But yeah. Um, we'll see. Listen, I, I, again, I do not think that <coughs> it's like Alexander Payne, I do not think is necessarily going to happen. Um, I think Glazer is a possibility, but we have to see. We have to see how that movie performs. Um, I think your top three are pretty locked. Um, yeah. I agree that Lanthimos is probably over Scorsese. Um, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe not for the nomination, but I think you're I think you're positioning them all. He's more win competitive, yeah. Which, but nothing's gonna beat Christopher Nolan. No, that's pretty locked. If there's something I would lock in in the above line, I have waited course. my entire life to say those words, and I'm so happy. <laughs> you just have to wait a few more months now. Oh my god, I know. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I the the makeup stuff is. I think it's a little overestimated, to be honest, because it's that's really only happened in the last few years. It's Gary Oldman. Gary uh, Oldman. Who else? Jessica Chastain. Jessica Chastain and Brendan Fraser. Brendan Fraser. Fraser. Only one second. Happened a lot. <laughs> yeah, but that's like if Jared you look Leto. at the years before that, it's not like it's a yearly thing. Is all I'm saying. It's not like it's something like Vice. One makeup was a big thing transformation. Since the pandemic. <laughs> Oh well, yeah, that's two years. Well, the that's not, <laughs> I, it's not. I, um, I don't. I think it's overestimated. Is all I'm saying. I yeah. don't think like Vice won makeup and it was big transformation stuff. Christian Bale didn't win. Doesn't yeah, but have to Robbie Malik didn't win for playing himself. He didn't win for Mr. Robot and playing in a hoodie. No, yeah, that was I also mean, Killian Murphy. Killian makeup. Murphy wouldn't win for playing himself. Killian Murphy has makeup. No, but I'm just like Rami Malik is playing a character with a lot of makeup. Whether they win or not, I think what the commenter is also saying is that yes, makeup, makeup does help. Makeup helps transform the performance. Um, yeah, Which Killian has. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Let's see what because this is the thing. Who is going to give it to either of them? Globe? Is it going to be you know Bradley Cooper didn't win? For A Star is Born, would he win for Maestro? You have to ask yourself that question. Zag, where are we going to lean? Obviously, Zag the popular Murphy. movie is going to go to Oppenheimer. And I also think Zag seems to be an, an audience that really sees a lot more television. than a lot of is definitely models. Murphy. So, like, I don't know. I feel like there's more of an argument for Killian Murphy. And again, I just don't think we're going to leave this award season it just seems so bizarre to me that we would give Oppenheimer almost every other award that it could yeah, it win. Yeah, doesn't make sense. Except Oppenheimer. But again, if, if, but also because like, if Bradley Cooper was really that beloved to the point that they really want to give him an Oscar, they would have given it to him for A Star is Born. There is no reason why Rami Malek wins if they love Bradley Cooper that much, it just no, Bradley it's Cooper overdue. doesn't have an overdue narrative. He's too young to have that narrative. I think people overestimate that. He just, I think because he, he was just, he had that streak of like silver lines playbook. Yeah. Hustle. It's only four acting noms. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This will be his fifth and you know, it's produced a lot. So we'll see. And also like, listen, Paul Thomas Anderson is what eight nominations. He still hasn't won. So like, it doesn't always happen. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I'm really hoping because I also think that like Killian Murphy, like when you look at it, Killian Murphy would definitely join the Anthony Hopkins camp for best actor. We haven't mm -hmm. seen Maestro, but I definitely think that like Killian Murphy is the type of performance that we want to have said we gave the Oscar for. For sure. That will he's look. Everything. He's funny. He's like immature. He like he's like a like a like a show off. And then he's like haunting and dark and depressing. Yes. It's that so will, much on that will show. look, that will look better in the history books. But yeah. I do think we've covered about everything here. Any final words before we head out for the day at our past um, lives runtime? <clears throat> yeah. I just think let's, I'm still, you know, I'm worried about directing. I really hope that with so many wonderful female filmmakers that they all don't get shut out and I, listen we it's not like we're giving them special treatment it just seems that a lot of times they are the ones that get shut out first when like they've made the highest grossing movie of the year and they've made a lot of big indie players so like why they are the ones fighting to get on the list is always questionable um but um we yeah we'll see about pain we have to see these movies let's see how they perform let's see how they perform with general audiences i think who wins the tiff audience award is going to be big to seeing who's our kind of our little like emotional juggernaut in a way that Green Book was, in a way that Jojo Rabbit was. Um, yeah, uh, I think it's a very interesting season, especially because usually when there's such a clear front runner, it ends up not being that. But I don't know. This could be a, we'll a very unique year. We shall have to see. But yes, thank you all for tuning in and joining don't us on the live stream. Thank you so much. We, we, we love appreciate you all. Thank it. You for being with us. We appreciate all of you immensely. We'll probably be doing more live streams lately because it's easier on the editing. So you guys will be able to participate much more like heading into us. this season. Yeah, much easier for me in terms of editing. We'll have to see what we do with Emmys because those are in January. So that's up in the air. Um, but yeah, thank you all for watching. Support the SAG and WWJ strikes down below. Like the video, 
subscribe, and we'll see you all in whatever video comes next. Bye, everyone.